uh, block check and equalise check considerations. We, we've already touched on this and, and we've understood that we can package the maintenance in different ways. We're going to look at it now in, in, in more detail. So let's think of some of the things that will affect our decision making process. For example, the aircraft utilisation, whether it's seasonality, whether it's charter, whether it's low utilisation, for example, business aircraft are typically low utilisation. We could also have uh, transport aircraft intentionally uh, operating with low utilisation. Uh, we could be long haul or short haul. Typically, of course, long haul we're going to be doing more hours. We could be scheduled or we could be cargo. Uh, aircraft ground time, how much time we have with the aircraft on the ground. We could be uh, away from main base or operating from main base. Manpower skills and availability. We need to have people who are competent and knowledgeable to be able to do the job. How many people have we got? Are they our people? Do they belong to somebody else? If there are people, imagine the flexibility. We've got all sorts of uh, ways that we can package it. If it's an external organisation, every change will need to be negotiated. I cannot make an assumption unless we factor in certain availability. So for example, if we arrange that I will pay you for 50 man hours in a, in a particular uh, period, I've got to use them 50 hours. So all of these different considerations, as well as the fleet size, how many aircraft we've got, and the fleet age, structural items threshold. Once we get into structural inspections, uh, you can't do a structural inspection on an overnight check. Well, you can try, and you can find yourself in a huge story when you need to do repairs. So all of these could be considered as variables. And of course, to make a decision, we've got to understand the variables, process, and then make the best decision. What we're looking at here is a concept which is called the block check concept. So here we are doing 1A check. This is a 1A check. So we've got a whole range of 1A checks. This is a 2A check. Here we're doing the 2A checks. And here we're doing the 4A checks. Here we're doing a 1C check. And here we're doing a 2C check. Here we're doing a 4C check. So we can see then, with this concept, that our labour requirement fluctuates. However, I mean, we don't have to calculate it. We can see very clearly that the amount of labour we need continually is at this level. Periodically, we jump up to this requirement. and Occasionally, we're at here. Once or twice, we get to here. And then we get to here. So how do we cope with this variability? And this is one of the challenges. This is one of the fundamental challenges to delivering an efficient product. Because coping with this requires a huge amount of difference from down here. Again, here we've got difference again. Now, some companies deal with it in a particular way. For example, they have enough labour to do the A checks and they outsource the C checks. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, another company has enough labour to do this with some overtime and they bring in contract labour for this one. Again, so many different ways of looking at this picture. Uh, so there is one option. Let's look at what's happened here. What we've done here, we've taken the A checks, 
these are the HX. The 1A, the 2A, the 4A. We've taken the HX and we've equalized them. So all the HX are now standard. Now that's, what that's done is given us a uniform product. But we've still got the C check sitting, poking out. Uh, again, some companies decide that they will stay with the A check equalized and they will outsource the C checks. So they will send the aircraft somewhere else for the C check. Mm -hmm. And that you can see would be a very effective way for some companies of managing the business. Because now we've got a consistent A check product and it's working okay. But the next question is how long does the A check take and how many people have we got? Because depending on how many hours in the A check and depending on the elapsed time will depend on basically the utilization of the facility. So imagine that the A check takes, let's say, two days. So how many airplanes have we got? How often do we do that A check? And how busy is the facility? Imagine that the facility is working five days a week, but because of the A checks, you've only really got two A checks for three weeks out of the month. What will you do for the fourth week? And what will you do on the days that there is no A check? Well, I work for a company. And some people would spend three days working and two days sitting in the crew room reading the newspaper. Hugely inefficient. And as a result, that company is no longer in business today. No surprises. So it's not just about equalizing, or as this term is, semi-equalizing. It's about balancing it. And later when we talk about capacity planning, we'll pay attention to uh, some of the considerations. What we've got to do is to maximize the use of the facility, maximize the use of the people. If I pay you, or you pay me for 40 hours, yeah, I want you to work for 40 hours. Is that, is that fair? I, I think so. This is what you're getting paid for. If I'm only giving you 20 hours work, shame on me. And that's what we've got to try and pay attention to. Here what we've done is the A, OOP stands for out of phase, and the C checks are equalized on an A check with one exception. This is our structural program. So here now we're doing an A check, an A1 check, plus part of an A2 check, plus part of an A4 check, plus a little bit of the C check each time the airplane comes in. So this is a fully equalized maintenance program. With one exception, the very heavy checks for structure would be outsourced. So that's another way of doing it. So again, see how much opportunity there is to do it in different ways. And of course, we've got a, the starting point is, how many people have I got? How long have we got the airplane for? What's our maintenance window? For example, if I could make, instead of the A check being two days, I could maybe make it three days if I had less people, or one day if I've got more people and more airplanes, and so on and so on. Here we're looking at an on-demand system. What happens here? Well, it's all over the place. Tasks managed on a case-by-case -case basis in order to optimize the maintenance program according to various operator parameters. You tell me how many days I can have the airplane for, and I will manage the maintenance accordingly. Can you imagine that? This is the planner's nightmare to try and do it this way. But in terms of availability, it matches completely with the availability. However, 
from a practical point of view, doing this much maintenance in one period and then saying that the aeroplane will be available tomorrow, it won't be, it'll be in bits. Mm -hmm. Not only will it be in bits, there'll be a shortage of something we can't get hold of, and so on and so on and so on. 